When a person has extreme social anxiety, they struggle to communicate with others. Bear in mind, they only struggle to form connections. It doesn't mean that they don't want to. Hello and welcome to another Hot Rods to Review. In this video, I will be reviewing the new popular anime series known as Komi Can't Communicate. This anime was definitely different from the ones I typically watch and I had a great time with it. In this video, you'll get further insights into what I think about the plot, characters, and just the show overall. Without further ado, let's get into the video. This anime is about a high school girl who has social anxiety. She has it so bad that it is very difficult for her to even talk to people. Hence the title, Komi Can't Communicate. This anime was very interesting. I never watched a show with social anxiety being one of the main themes before, so it definitely piqued my interest right from the beginning. Although this show had a very serious theme, it is also very comedic, and that threw me off at first. The first episode was the only one that had a huge focus on the gravity of the situation Komi is in. But every other episode in this show is filled with short stories that test the limits of Komi's anxiety in a very comedic fashion. You may be thinking at this point that I didn't enjoy the comedy, but that is not true. I really did enjoy it, and a lot of these episodes made me laugh. The comedy was just a bit of a tone switch that caught me by surprise, so I wanted to talk about it. If you didn't know, this anime is technically shonen. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't believe me, as this show is very different from the stereotypical shonen, but shonen isn't about fantasy, action, and adventure. It's a target demographic aimed at young male teens. The easiest way to tell if an anime is a shonen is by looking at the age and gender of the protagonist. You may believe that Komi is the protagonist since the show focuses around her social anxiety, but I believe that Tadano is more of the protagonist as he is the only character whose thoughts we can hear. And we also get more insight on Komi Komi through him, so it does seem like he is the protagonist, and he is a young male teen, so that indicates that this anime is shonen. If you still don't believe me, you can look it up and find out yourself. But while I was watching, I could also somewhat tell that this was shonen, because it felt like it had a monster of the week type of format. Instead of really buff guys taking on a different monster or enemy stand user each week, Komi battled her social anxiety in different social experiences each week. Another thing I want to mention is that I really like Komi's goal of making 100 friends. I said this in a previous review, but it is very similar to Shiki's goal from Ed and Zero. <laughs> However, I enjoyed Komi's goal more than I did Chiki's because Komi's social anxiety actually makes this a difficult goal for her to accomplish. And Komi's goal lets us know that she actually values human connection, and it makes it so much more painful knowing that it is very hard for her to acquire. I really love the characters in this anime. My three favorite side characters are currently Najimi, Agari and Yamai. I often found myself laughing every time the Jimmy was on screen. You can tell that she has her own agenda and she doesn't really bend much to the will of others. Her best moment was definitely in the last episode when she started running the maid cafe. She was making so much money doing borderline illegal activities and I honestly just admire that confidence. Without her, the series would definitely not be as fun as it is. And I love Agari because her whole personality just caught me off guard. I thought that she was this sweet and shy girl just like Komi-san, but she turned out to be a huge masochist. My favorite moment from her was when Komi was attempting to ask for her phone number, but Agari mistook her attentions and believed that Komi wanted to take humiliating naked photos of her for her phone screen. It was just so bizarre and it was also just hilarious. And yes, I really love Yamai's character. When she was first introduced, she gave off scary yandere vibes and it definitely creeped me out. I honestly didn't believe her character was going to get a chance at redemption, but she did. And now she is a hilarious background character who would do anything for Komi-san. The art and animation for this show was really great. The animation studio is called Oriental Light and Magic, or OLM for short. I've never actually heard of this studio's existence until now, but apparently they also do some animation for Pokemon. Overall, I'd say that this is a very good show. I had a fun time watching it weekly since Netflix did do a weekly release. I think I'll give it a solid 8 out of 10 because it wasn't the best thing I ever watched, but it was definitely amazing. A second season has already been confirmed to come out April of this year, so it will be part of the spring season. This show must have been very popular to have gotten renewed that quickly, and honestly, I can't wait to see how this story is going to continue.
Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a like and to click that subscribe button to see more anime reviews in the future. And let me know what you thought of this anime if you watched it in the comment section down below. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.